night that you see in the corner of your eye, that whisper in your ear that you can't quite place, that tap on your shoulder that when you look there's nobody there. We're here to find the truth, to share history not often told. Hello, and welcome to Ashley's Tavern, formerly known as Jack's Tavern. Over the years, this place has gone through many names. As you can see behind me, it is an old historic building, um, formerly built in the 30s. This place is said to have a lot of paranormal activity behind it, uh, a lot of history, and a lot of good haunts. Uh, we are going to take you inside and show you some of these hot spots and low spots. So please join us as we investigate Ashley's Tavern. Alright, so I'm going to give you a little rundown on the story of the fall and all the facts that were based on the case because there's a lot of, of different um, opinion out there floating on what's happening, and many people have just added to the story or taken away important details. So pretty much what we know to be true is that in November of 1934, a found body was found on the banks of the Indian River, and it was found by three men who had seen the buzzards and so they called the police, and that was all fine and dandy. The body was heavily mutated, stabbed, the throat was slashed, there were fractures in the brain. They're the only part that had hair left on the scalp was in the very back, and that's because the body had been burned and then dumped. One leg was partially dismembered and an arm, like just barely hanging on it. Um, so coroners decided that she had been killed, and then they had tried to dispose of the body, and that was proven through the forensics at the time. Not really sure because the police report doesn't exist anymore. Um, in 1934, we were able to find some of the different articles titled Brutally Murdered Body of Coco Girl is Found Yesterday. She was 19 at the time, and the sheriff had clues about the murder, but nobody was ever actually arrested. The primary suspect was a man named William Wilson, aka Bill, and Bill and her were seen to have, um, they were in a car placed that morning and had went to say goodbye to one of her friends at a packing plant company. And she had said that Bill and her were going to Wachula to visit some family and they were going to be gone for a while. And so um, there were really no clues when they found her body, no real motive or intent. Um, but that's pretty much what went on. And she was a girl in the 1930s who had a tattoo that was socially unacceptable at the time. We know that women who had tattoos at that time actually traveled in the circus. Um, they were periodically put different headlines in there, such as, no new developments in Apple Allen murder case. And so they were really quite stumped. Her boyfriend actually took his car three hours after her body was found and just drove away. And there were witnesses to seeing him pack up and leaving, but the police were unable to identify him after that point. A couple of years after that fact, they did find some information by using handwriting samples. And what they found was that there was a man, and his name was William Morton, and he was wanted in several other states for murder, larceny, safe cracking, which you don't really hear of that crime anymore. He broke into safes. The funny part is that in Tallahassee, a woman was found thrown out of car, her throat slashed, in a very similar condition, except the body wasn't burned or anything, so that they hadn't tried to dispose of it, they just threw her out of car. And the only thing that they had linking that to Borton was the handwriting sample. That and the fact that his characteristics, like he was about the same height, he looked the same, his hair color was the same, eye color was the same. So that was their only real suspect. And no arrests were ever made. 
And that's what we know to be the truth. Okay. Say hey, whatever you want. Uh, baby, baby. Just whenever you're ready. Here. Join the session. I mean, you interviewed Greg Parker. Parker. Thank you. What's your name? Greg Parker. Greg Parker. And you're the owner of Ashley's. Yes. Tower? How long have you owned this place? I've been here since 1985, November 18th, 1985. 1985. Since you've been here, have you witnessed anything personally? Um, I've heard some strange things happen. Um, in December of '85, after we first bought the place, it was a bad winter. Uh, back then, I used to be the cook, dishwasher, clean up, did everything. Oh, everything. Everything. I had no money. And uh, I was down in the corner of the bar. It was a Monday morning, about 11 o'clock. This guy came in, he had the dreadlocks. He was just like a strange, skinny little guy. And uh, he said he had just hitchhiked from California. Oh. And I uh, was here to do an exorcism on the ghost. He had heard about the ghost and was going to do an exorcism. I'd just taken over the place, didn't know anything really about it. And uh, got talking to him and said, oh, we really don't need an exorcism, everything's fine. He says, well, as I stand here now, I feel a presence of two more beings. And I was standing there around the corner of the bar right downstairs. I was there, my wife was there, and the bartender was there. Well, it was 11 o'clock in the morning, and we're the only ones there, and this guy's like really strange. I said, I gotta go back in the kitchen, go to work. Well, he was dead right, because that was in December of 1985. In June of 85, my wife had a baby, and the bartender had a baby. And the bartender didn't even know she was pregnant. My wife knew she was pregnant, but she was only like seven weeks pregnant, so she didn't show it all. But the guy was right. There was two other beings there. Okay. Um, I came in one morning. This is going, again, all these things were like way back in the day, but came in one morning. We have an alarm system. I opened up every day. Every day. I was the only one who had the alarm code. I opened up every day. And um, there was a drink on the bar. still had ice in it. And there was toilet paper coming out of the ladies' room, wrapped around the bar, and going back into the ladies' room. And <laughs> the alarm was... You have no, you don't know what no, happened with no that. No idea. Would you say there's, there's paranormal things definitely happening here? It was strange things. Strange uh, things. Are, yes. you a bit, are you a bit of a skeptic? Um, my wife swears she was tapped walking on the stairs. She was walking down that stairway there. Swear somebody was just tapping on her back all the way down. She kept turning around. Nobody was there. Nobody was there. So you're, you would say you're a skeptic. I'm a skeptic, but you know what? There's, you just love the restaurant. You want to keep it the way it is. Uh, I'm not ready to do an exorcism yet. No, not no. An exorcism. We wouldn't say it's that no. bad. No. So when you when you bought the place, would you say that guy with the dreadlocks was the first time of hearing about the ghost? Kind of, yeah. Um, heard rumors. Yeah, I'd heard rumors, but that was a real thing. I mean, it was really. You had to be there because you didn't realize till afterwards that he was dead right. He said, "I feel the presence of two more beings," and he, I, we thought he always talked about ghosts. Well, there was two unborn children there, and mm. he was dead right. Okay, that's really um, interesting. Um, what all do you know of the history of this place? Um, first liquor bar in Brevard County opened in uh, November of 1930. Or opened on New Year's Eve in 1932. Um, the ghost story is actually based on a woman named Ethel Allen, last seen fighting here with her boyfriend in November of 1934. Um, that was on a Saturday night. Somebody looked through the windows, the upstairs apartment. The upstairs here was an apartment. Okay. Somebody saw a couple fighting up here. They thought it was her. That was on a Saturday night. On a Tuesday morning, her body was found burned and dismembered on the banks of the Indian River. Mm. Um, this is 1934. She was only identified. Her hands and head had been cut off. Her body had been charred. But she was identified by a rose tattoo with a noose through it on the inside of her thigh. What would you say the significance of the tattoo? Uh, I heard rumors in from... In 1934, I wouldn't think there'd be a lot of girls with tattoos. So would you say she was kind of a... Uh, I wouldn't say anything. Wouldn't say anything? Okay. I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> you're going to go, go the safe route? Just go the safe route, yeah. But <laughs> anyway, um, the rumor is that uh, the guy she was fighting with was the son of a local prominent politician. Okay. Nobody was ever charged with the murder. There was never really any investigation. And that's in 1985, Billy Cox, famous photographer for Florida Today, came in here with three psychics. They spent a week here. And uh, they, in, the, in July of 85, Florida Today, big front page, like for, I don't want to say a week. It was a front page story every day in the, in the B or C section, but on the front page. And they set up a camera and took pictures all night long. And they determined they were fighting upstairs here. The girl ran down the stairway, hid underneath the stairway. Um, he found her there, and that's where he killed her. And that's why the, haunt, the ladies' room is the most haunted part of the building. Okay. What, what kind of activity have you heard about the bathroom down there, the ladies' room? Uh, my friend, ladies say that they look and there's somebody in the stall next to them with boots on. 
and then they look and there's nobody there, they never hear anybody come in and go out, or that they see the boots, specifically the boots, the ladies lace up boots underneath the stall and then there's nobody there. Mm, that's strange. That's strange. Um, since you've owned the building, have you done any rebuilding, uh, walls taken down, anything like that? No, not same really. Same state, no. same, same state? It's the same, just leave the way it is. Yeah. From your knowledge, do you know if this building is in the same exact state it was when, before you bought um, it? No, it, somewhere along the line, somebody cut the hole in the floor here and put the railing around the tables on. Because the upstairs was an apartment. Yeah. The bar is not, was originally directly below us, not where it is now. And we're now where the bar is with storage. So the building has been changed over the years. Okay. Um, the upstairs was an apartment, now it's open like this. So no, there's been changes to the building through the years. Okay. But I didn't do it. <laughs> One, uh, one final question for me in this. What's your favorite item on the menu? Uh, I like the prime rib sandwich. The prime rib sandwich? Prime rib sandwich. Yeah. Did, you, did you design the menu yourself? Uh, we go, I go to different restaurants to see things I like and copy it, or <laughs> sometimes we think of things. It's, it is what it is. My favorite so far is the, uh, the Megan, I Megan Island Burger. Have you tried the prime rib sandwich? Not yet. I'm going to try the prime rib sandwich, try the chicken ciabatta, and try the... Um, um, Blue Bayou by Burger. Uh, actually, well, that was going to be my next choice. Uh, Plan on coming back here again. It's good to go. I hope so. Well, thank you for uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, hope you have some fun tonight. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Joey Mustician. Hello. I'm interviewing you for Ghost Zone. Um, how long have you worked here? Almost seven years. Uh, could you introduce yourself? Christy. Christy Collins. Mm -hmm. what, what is your position here? Uh, server. Server? Mm -hmm. How long have you worked here? Seven years. Seven years? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> well, for some reason, I'm nervous when I'm talking to you, but no one else. Um, can you tell, tell, tell some stories you've heard here? Um, well, when I started here, I didn't believe in ghosts. So anything that was happening, I would try to find a uh, logical explanation. Except um, certain nights, I'm the only server upstairs. And I'm closing upstairs. It's probably about 10, 1030 at night when I'm on the computer. Um, and I felt this tap on my back shoulder like a, hey, you. It felt very urgent. I thought it was my boss. So I turn around, turn my head. I'm doing a 360. There's nobody there. And that's when you, you know, the light bulb goes on. Well, after that, previously, I was feeling, um, walking around, close, uh, like a cold chill. I work upstairs, so I'm, my body temperatures are always hot. And it would just it hit you and then go away. So after that experience of being tapped on the shoulders, I would thought, well, that was the, my dose experience. A few months down the road, I'm in the um, kitchen and um, right by the walking cooler. Well, the, one of the cooks comes out. He, I could see he was scared. And he looked at me, he said, were you just in the cooler? And I thought it was kind of funny because he just came out of the cooler. So I asked him what was wrong. And he said that he was bending down picking up a box of potatoes, and um, he saw some legs go by. And um, so he looked up to see who it was, and he didn't, he didn't see the person. So he came out, I said, Tony, you, I didn't even know you were in there. Nobody went in and nobody came out. Well, about a couple years later, I didn't really experience much, but I was in the bathroom. I've been here so many years, I know the sounds of everything, the front door opening, but I'm in the bathroom, and I know I'm the only one in there. And the door's locked and the door starts, like somebody's on the other side, pulling in to get in. I looked underneath, there's no feet, there's nothing. So that's pretty much my stories. The feet that he saw, was the, did he did they describe them like female? Right? He said it was a female. Did, did mm -hmm. he say they were wearing any shoes at all? Yeah, but he, he, he was, he, he was very scared, so I didn't get into detail about it. Okay. But I did hear one time in the walk-in cooler, which was really weird, um, a woman crying you know, sobbing really hard, and I'm, I know I'm the only one in there, but I jumped out of the cooler thinking, you know, maybe I heard somebody outside of the door, and it was only men in the kitchen. Hmm. So, that was one of the other experiences. Okay. Can you tell us about some of the other employees that work here, and how they react to a lot of things going on here? It's kind of, it's like where they know that there's someone here, and it's sort of copacetic with it right now. We're kind of just like, you know, we do our thing, you guys mm -hmm. do your thing, it's exactly. not here. Exactly. Okay. Well, there was another incident when I used to work Saturday days, and I would be the first girl server to come up. And I came up, and we had these table tents. They, they're on the table. And every one of them was on the floor. So I go to the girl that was cleaning, 
and I brought her upstairs and I said, look what, what happened. And she's like, when she left, every one of them was on the table. So I go to put them all on and the last one I go to leave downstairs and I hear a noise and the table tent's now down on the floor. And the AC is in, there's no drafts in here. So I was wondering what that, I think it's a little girl in the blue dress. Um, is that Jane, the little girl in the blue dress? I don't really know her name. I do know one of my tables, which is um, a couple, it was like four months ago. I've never met him. It was a, a family of 12. And they were, one of the parents were going around taking pictures and taking pictures. So when they all settled down, I gave them the, the story on the ghost, and then I started telling them my story. And when I talked about the little girl in the blue dress, her eyes got really big. And she went through a camera, and she got a perfect silhouette downstairs of this girl, probably about that high, in a, like a church gown, pale blue. And I asked her to develop it and, um, you know, bring it back in, and I never saw her again. How often do you have people come here and investigate in this place? A bunch. We have people come in to eat dinner and, you know, take pictures and stuff like that. How often do you think people catch them, catch like activity, like overnight investigations like we're doing? Um, quite a bit, really. Pictures on, even on their cell phones, they get orbs, you know. Do you believe in the orbs? Oh yeah, definitely. I saw one the other night, I couldn't explain. Okay. Could you, um, could you explain like when you first became aware of the paranormal? I remember we had a conversation mm -hmm. previously and you told us about... Probably about six years ago. Mm -hmm. Could you, yeah. could you go with a brief description of what happened or... Well, I got tapped on my shoulder and that was, like you said, I had been working here a while and I'd heard everybody's stories, I'd be, yeah, 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 right, you know. I remember you telling me about mm -hmm. a story that happened outside of this that kind of opened your eyes to a lot of things happening with the biker. No, I think that was one of our, our purveyors. He was outside. Um, and he said he knew about the ghost, and he said in the outside when he was walking up, there was a face in the window, he took a picture. And there's nobody in the office, because the office is closed at night, so. Okay. He could see a face in the window. He's got the picture, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of any other questions to ask you. Good thing about shooting this interview, we can always cut mm -hmm. shots out that we want. But, um. That's pretty much. When was the last time you, would, last time you yeah. saw any activity, felt any activity? Um, I don't know if um, Amy had told you that one story about um, when I was upstairs. Um, me and the dishwasher were standing up here talking and I was stocking up um, styrofoam cups. And I went to throw it, uh, the wrapper that was on it and I put the cups down. Well, when I threw the wrapper away, I heard her go, <gasps> like that. And I'm like, what's the matter? And she said, Christy, when you put the cups down, the top cup kind of went up, and left, went sideways and then back down. So I'm trying to find an explanation, so I smack the cups down again and into it. <laughs> kind of loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like that all the time. Oh, worse. Again, drunk. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I keep when you when you work here. Amy told me that she felt a little sad when she works here, mainly because of the girl that's left behind. And she tells her that she wishes she like you know followed the light. Mm -hmm. What do you Have feel? Fun. What do you feel when you're here? Like I don't feel sad. Um, you feel scared, fighting? No, fighting? not scared. I don't feel scared, not at all. I know they're just stuck, and their their time will come when they go, and I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's so, kind of just I, like roommates and a mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah, stay out of each other's way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, we have what's your name? Stephen Kirky. And what do you do? I an amateur ghost hunter. Amateur ghost hunter. You, you showed us quite a few gadgets you have to help you track these things down and get evidence of what you have. And you actually have something to show us, right? Yes, sir. And can you describe that before we listen to it? Yes. Uh, I was doing a lockdown here at the restaurant and outside the ladies' restroom uh, on my spirit box, I caught uh, a woman saying hello. And it was muffled at first. And I said, could you just say hello? And then a few seconds later, I got a Class A uh, piece of evidence said hello right back to me. Okay. That's interesting. You want to actually uh, show us that? Yes. Okay, I've got my 
uh, external speaker with my EDP recorder playing back the spirit box recording. Okay. Play when you're ready. Okay. Pretty sweet. And yeah, that was just you in there? It was just me by yourself. Get by myself. That's very interesting. So how long have you been coming here for investigations? Well, I said I've been interested in the past ten years in ghost hunting and paranormal, but I say within the last year, as I was acquiring more and more equipment, starting out with just a little digital recorder, uh, just going around trying to catch evidence, being at the right place at the right time to catch stuff. Did you grow up around this area? Uh, no, originally from New Jersey. New Jersey? Yep. How long have you lived here? Uh, about 20 years. So, 20 years. You, so, you've been around here hearing the stories of this place. You thought that you could start. Definitely piqued my curiosity. Alright. Um, can you tell us where, like, when, what started you? What was, like, the inspiration for you to start doing this? Did you have, like, a personal experience that kind of triggered it? And you're, from there on, this is like. Well, I've always. <laughs> It's always been on my mind whether spirits or ghosts exist. So it's more of a personal yeah. mission to find out, maybe and just to enlighten yourself a little bit better. Yeah, and I wanted to, you know, watching some of the paranormal shows on TV where they use scientific equipment to back up their evidence, I wanted to see for myself if this is true. So it's a, yeah. it's a pretty close hobby to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. Um, can you describe some of the other things you've got? Yeah. Well, like I said, when I did a lockdown, I actually caught uh, three knockings from inside the ladies' room coming from inside one of the stalls. And I also caught a younger woman, yeah, because I was trying to get a response, and she said, what? Like when you're bugging your mom as a child, and you're just constantly saying, you yeah, trying to get her attention, and your mom goes, what? That's exactly <laughs> That's what it was. Good. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I'd like to thank you for being on the show and talking with us and showing what you have. No problem. Really appreciate it. Thank Pleasure. you. Hi, I'm Joey. Hi, I'm Amy. Amy, all right. So, how long have you worked here? Five years. Five years? Okay. Have you, how, is there a lot of activity here, would you say? I've had numerous things happen to me, but on a regular basis, not really, no. Um, I mean, it's in like spurts. We'll have like three weeks of heavy activity and then sometimes seven months will go by and nothing will happen. Okay, would you say that's like during certain times of the year though? Like I do believe it is. Around Easter, the heavy activity happened um, around the holidays, like between Thanksgiving and Christmas, a lot of activity happens. Okay. Um, in the colder months, more activity seems to maybe happen than in the hot summer. I don't know why, but yeah. yeah. How much of the history do you know of this place? Um, as much as I could find out about it, because I, you know, I read in different books how supposedly this place was on a Indian burial ground and stuff like that. Found absolutely no information proving that, so I was a little, you know, irritated that my boss would have a book that stated that in it because it's, you know, it's just not true. But um, I do know a little bit. I actually met Ethel Allen's great niece okay. uh, two weeks ago. We actually have an interview with her, I think, set up. Yeah, I have her, a picture of her on my camera. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. She came and talked to me. So, how, uh, let's see, there's a question I was trying to kind of escape you for a second. Um, can you explain some of the activity that you witnessed with your own eyes and being? Um, the first, when I first got hired here, I had heard the place is haunted. I was born at Wustoff across the street, raised between here and Queens, so I've always heard this place is haunted. And this lady named Sue Kim, uh, who used to work here, came, you know, I asked her, I said, should I be, you know, concerned? And she said, just mind your own business, don't poke around at it, and they'll leave you alone. I said, okay. And I didn't read anything about it. I didn't ask any questions. Just, sorry. Just kind of, um, you know, did my own thing, and then one night I had an 18 top at this booth, and then it went out that way. And I, there was nobody up here. It was about 11:30 at night. I was standing right there, and I reached across the table to grab an empty cup, and I glanced in this mirror, and there was a child, a little girl, 
doing this. Like, kind of cr crouched over. She looked like maybe seven or eight. Um, faint. She was, out. In the, she was a reflection in the mirror? Yeah. But I, where would you say she was at? She was standing right there. She was, she was right. If she would have put her butt back against that table, because I could see the chair legs through her, but I couldn't see the chair, the top of it. So it kind of freaked, and I turned around to say, can I either I help you or scream? And there was no one there. And she was like crouched over watching me bust the table. And that was, I, if I freaked out. I mean, I almost threw up. So would you say you saw a full body apparition then? Um, I, I saw the line of her face here, here, and down the side of her body. But she was solid. Like I, solid. Put, I she was actually standing there. She was actually yeah. standing there, but the no that this form, no smoke form, no um, see through. I could see the chair legs, but that was it. Okay. Only the chair legs. Okay. She looked like she was wearing a baby petal, petal blue, like the the blue on that thing over there. That okay. that's what her dress looked like to me. Okay. And she looked like she might have had blonde hair. What? What time frame? Like time it was 11:30 at night. Well, what time do you think she was dressed for? Like the 19th, I'm early gonna 19th no, years? I'm gonna say the 70s or 80s. She looked like she might have been dressed like you would dress your child to go to church on Sunday. Have you ever done any research on people that might, may have passed in this area in the 70s child form? Um, I know that after seeing that, um, somebody you know, this guy named Eric who used to work here. For a very long time, I ran downstairs and I was ghost white. I was, I couldn't even talk. I was so upset. And um, he asked me what I saw, and I said, I think I saw a child. And he was like, You saw a little girl. And I said, What little girl? He said that he told me the story about a little girl who supposedly died in a car accident outside and came in here. But the story he told me was that she died in like the 90s. And then, and when I did a little bit of research, supposedly she died in like the 70s or 60s. Um, I have not, I cannot, I, no lie, in the last eight years, because I've been gone to school for the last three years. I worked for Greg and Sue Parker from 2005 to 2009, and well, the end of 2009, and then I just came back a couple months ago. But, um, I can't come up here by myself, by, at all. <laughs> that was, was going to lead to my next question. Are you like, are you afraid? Do you feel like you're in danger? Do you feel like I hate feeling? Don't. No, I feel like, in all honesty, I feel. I feel like um, after. I mean, if that child's been in here for that long, believe me. Okay, I've heard her. She has called my name to me. If I, I've, I can hear her, she can hear me. And I've told her to follow the light and go home and, you know, and she's not listening to me. So I feel sad. I feel really bad that a little child would be left here all by herself in, in an old restaurant, you know. It saddens me more than anything. It does. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be comfortable being here by, your, by yourself at night? No. Any part of the tavern? No. No? Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> no. Is there any other like like activity you've seen? A lot. Yeah. Uh, lots. Um, with Five my years. my freakiest um, experience um, beside when a serving tray went flying at my head a couple months back um, was I had a friend of mine here from Iraq and we were sitting at the bar and the bar's you know a nice triangle shape. Downstairs. Downstairs and where the women's restroom is. It, my, the bartender, Lynn, was sitting here. My friend, Jen, was sitting here. Where the bar turns, I was sitting here, and Audra was sitting there. It was about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the morning. The door by the salad bar swung open, and a huge black mass from the floor to the ceiling in about four to five feet wide came in the door up the step you know that or they we always say watch your step mm -hmm. up the step and went sh -sh -sh -sh, right out the back door the flaps went flying as it went out the back door my friend Jen was here from Iraq and the bartender Lynn's hair went flying up 
they were both covered in goosebumps. That was part, and it was doing about 90 miles an hour. That's probably the creepiest thing I've ever seen. So, you're aware that we're going to have an investigation here tomorrow night? Oh, just do your prayers, man. Do you think we'll catch anything? you think we'll have any activity yet? I think that if, um... Oh, sorry. I think that if, uh... You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say to you because I don't know. I mean, like I said, things happen here and there. Any recent stuff happened? Uh, the last thing I had happened to me was about a month and a half, two months ago when that thing went flying in my head. But Easter this year, probably the heaviest activity in one time, one day happened to me. It was broad daylight, okay? Broad freaking daylight. 5.30 in the afternoon. Christy, the short one that's been helping me this evening. I was standing, you know, see, there's the lady sitting over there. There's one table behind them that's table nine. I sat four people at that table. I glanced over and Christy was standing right here at this thing, looking down. I figured she was looking at her notepad. I walked to this stairwell and I said, Christy, I sat you at table. I just sat table nine. There's four people. And we were really busy, so I was kind of in a hurry. No response. She kept looking down. She turned and walked into the wait station. Mark my words, I was like, gosh darn it, now she's just ignoring me. I came hauling butt around here. I turned the corner to scream at her that I had sat her at table and there was no one in there. I saw skin, I saw hair, black clothing from here to the, I mean, I didn't look at the floor because I wasn't, you know, I saw a solid person standing there. It was 5.30 in the afternoon. You can't fake that. Christy was downstairs. She's coming up the stairs. Why are you screaming my name? I'm down, what do you want? That freaked me out. She told us that this is no longer her place, so I can I can understand why you would thought it would hurt. Her. Not less than an hour later, I was downstairs by the men's room putting putting um, green the green mats that we put on the tables. I was putting them on the booth downstairs. I had put the three on this side. I had gotten to the first one on this side, and I heard Amy skip 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 Amy. And I looked up and there was no one there, no one standing around me, and it was her. It was that little girl. I mean, I heard it clear as day. All the hair on my body stood straight up. That was probably, that's the heaviest activity in one night I've ever had. I mean, stuff like that's one night. I mean, I've had things happen to me, but not in one day. Not both of them showing themselves in one day. Over like a prolonged period of time. Right. But that... Do you have a name you call this girl? Um, her name's supposedly Jean. Jean? But when I saw her, maybe because she looked like a Sarah to me, I heard Sarah. I'm, and I've said that from the day that it happened. I'm not saying, I mean, that could be, you know, your mind does play tricks on you and stuff, but I heard Sarah. I don't know. It, but I've never had any experience with the male figure that I caught on my camera. I don't know anything about him. Um, but he's definitely here. I didn't believe it until I caught it on my camera. But I don't know who he is. But the little girl is probably the most interactive of all the ghosts. To me, I don't know. I don't see. I've seen Ethel, and I've, she screamed my name to my face when I was coming. So we're standing in front of the men's restroom at Ashley's Tavern. This is supposed to be very haunted in here. This is the primary place where um, most of the negative feelings are felt by that we found from other paranormal investigators and also other witnesses who have been here. So let's just take a quick peek inside. As you see, it's very, very small vaulted ceilings, a couple of urinals, stall. And here, everything is supposed to go crazy every now and then. Got strange mirrors. This is how it originally was when the building was made in the 1930s. Hasn't changed much since then.
definitely. I'm thinking if we're going to find any activity, some of it's going to be in here. Ready? Here we go. So we're here in the men's bathroom at Ashley's Tavern. We're going to do some EVPs with Manny. So here we go. Is there anybody here with us that would like to make contact? If you would like to speak with us, we are more than happy to speak with you. Are you in here with us? Do you like it in here? It's a beautiful restaurant. I would love to hear your story if you would be willing to share it with me. And by the way, we mean you no harm. We're just here to talk. Okay, just go in there in the stall and I'm gonna leave the camera rolling and step out. Give you like five minutes. Okay, close the door. Speak with us if you would like to speak. Put 
it on and then just put it right there. Men's bathroom, take two. I'm gonna leave this digital recorder sitting here. If there is anything you would like to say to us, please feel free to. Like I said, we don't mean any harm, we just wanna talk. Tell us your story. This is Terry. He's a good guy. And my name is Manny. I'm a good guy too.
so we're now pulling out our radiation detector and this is the ion radiation detector at the front of it. it takes in the electrons and the neutrons and all that and every time something happens it's gonna do a little beep we're gonna push it all the way to sound all the way to the right and then we're gonna lay it right here every time it beeps that means that there's some kind of radiation Let's just move it over here and have it pointing away from the faucet. Now there's always natural radiation in the air, so a couple of beeps a minute is it's pretty usual. A consistent pulse would show that there was something there because ghosts and the paranormal are supposed to manifest themselves in alpha, beta, and x-rays. So dark, I can't see anything. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to like scare you guys. Um, do you guys want to check out the women's restroom? See if you guys can get anything? Yeah. Alright, um... We're now going into the women's restroom in Ashley's. This is an original storage shed well, a storage room. It was underneath the stairs. Many mediums have said that in here, this is where she hid originally. So we're gonna go ahead and go in there. Hello. We come in peace. Go on. You go ahead and go in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put this right there. There have been many tells of the toilet paper just spinning for no reason. So we're gonna see. Wow, that's a steady beep. What? Steady beep from the reader. Okay, man, go ahead with the EVPs. Uh, Go ahead with the EVPs. Don't leave me in here. I'm not leaving you in here. Hello. If you would like to speak with us, please do so. My name is Manny, and this is Terry. And we come in peace. We would just like to speak with you. So if you have anything to say, please do so. Are you still hiding here, Apple? Are you still hiding? Ethel, if you're here, would you please speak with us? Show us that you're here. Come and stand right here. Right in front of this little machine.
Did you hear those footsteps? That's probably what it sounded like when the guy came to drag her out of this room. Is that you, Ethel? Okay, Manny, I'm gonna pass it in here to you. Just set it somewhere flat. Normally don't peep over stalls, but... It's not nearly going off now. Right. Now it is. This thing should have been hiding in here. Can you crawl under there? Under where? Under there, see the side. See the what? See what's going on the other side. By itself. Oh, we're recording still. So. That was us, guys. Just so you know, it's us. Us. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I don't know where Joey went, so I was like, I'll check up on you. Are you scared? Don't be scared, dog. I was just like, I walked down, I was like, I'm by myself. <laughs> Terry's really big, he'll protect them. I just don't really have much to be. I mean, I've, I've taken pictures of the same thing like 12 times. Anything so. upstairs? I didn't get anything. I got like one orb um, in that little area. You did? Yeah, I'll show you. It's nothing like super impressive. It's just, um, it's just a white orb, which I don't really trust white orbs or some reason. But I got that. And I took a picture again. Ooh. I got like, I feel like I got a couple weird little orbs earlier, but nothing like impressive. I got up tiny little orbs in this picture, but I think they're probably not fine. Oh, cool. Maybe everybody's upstairs. Yeah. I want to do an evening upstairs. Come on, T-Crew. Nothing's going to get you, Manny. Are you freaked out? He is freaked out. I just want it static somewhere. I'm just gonna leave it right here for a while. See if we can get anything.
The whisper is short, but we can't quite make out what it's saying, but you can clearly hear at 5 minutes and 23 seconds. Now the next thing I have for you is a video we took of the guest stairs, and this has Terry in it. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of a, maybe a shadow person, we think, kind of going in front of the light. So we're going to show that to you. Tell us what you think. Watch the light to the left of my head. Shadow person? You can clearly see the light right to the left of Terry's head. And if you keep watching, you'll see shadows passing in front of it. And we have our little radar detector. If anything passes by or any motion passes by, it starts beeping. It is kind of creepy. Alright, next piece of evidence I have for you is in the men's re restroom, and it's actually guest star me. Um, I'm in the stall and I'm, you know, taking some EVPs and stuff like that, and we had the camera set up facing the stall, but as you know, in the men's bathroom, the wood is across the window so you can't have any light going through, and it was only me in the bathroom. So, let me show you this. Of the faucet to the middle of the screen. This time I've decided to leave. <laughs> Same place right over the faucet. You see a little flash of light. And then I was. I'll show you in slow motion. So a little flash pass over the faucet.
then the next piece of evidence I have for you is in the women's restroom. Um, before we went in there, there was a toilet paper roll. There wasn't any toilet paper on it, but it was just the roll on the floor. And it was intact, okay? And uh, we returned a little bit later, and we found it ripped in half, which um, I know Joey and Gracie were in there after us, so we I don't have an explanation for this. And that's what we took at the end of the night. Can you call under there? Underwear. Under there say there's so see if what? None of us touched it. <laughs> so to me that's kind of Alright. This is the last piece of evidence I have to show you. It's our item radar detector. Now that was facing the opposite direction of me and Terry. So nobody was passing in front of it and it beeps when motion goes by it. Are you still heading in here, Apple? Are you still hiding in here, Apple? Are you still hiding? Ethel, if you're here, would you please speak with us? stuff, a little kind of creepy stuff, and it's a very good place to investigate. We thank you very much. And here we find ourselves in the Crooked Mile Cemetery, also known as the Georgiana Cemetery, where Ethel Allen was buried, and we hope that she found her rest here because in 1934 she was laid to rest. And um, people from all over the world, all over the country, come here to pay their respects, leaving flowers, little ornaments, just to let Ethel know that we still care.
Now, Go. Okay. My name is Fanny, and I'm here with Candida. Can you tell me your full name? It's, it's Candida Don Dale. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is English. What is your relationship to Ethel Allen? I am her great, great niece. Baby sister Edith Allen. Um, we've come um, over time to find out that uh, well, there is a very strong like this and similar connection. Well, what, what are you doing? No, that my grandmother was a supporter of the if not that. And that uh, Edith and Ethel would have been at least half similar and possibly half human. And that their, I believe that their mother would have been a full blood symbol. Well, here, here's the thing, you know, you're accused of saying what you believe has no certain your own actually has a freedom. Well, from what I've heard and about some of history, if it's actually correct, and so um, everything that the woman was involved with, with somebody who was not of the tribe during that time period, so they could have been, then they would have, they would have had enough if they were pregnant, they would have been allowed to give birth to a child, and they would have been pregnant. And the child would have been raised as a full blood symbol and not a much of that could have been any connection to anything outside of the small track. Well, true. Where would you go? Is it possible that they might have known somebody that was similar but found out that Nancy could have been some more practical and that could have led to what I thought that would have been good? That would be almost probably through important. I'm sure we'll never find out, but it's always a possibility as well. I still have to about her haunting essence, have her, do you believe her spirit is still there? If she does haunt the tavern, I don't think she stays there. Um, is it possible? Yes, but I'd like to believe that she will have gone and then she'll have to stay here. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more to tell them. 